Um, but now I've worked with thousands of women, and that is pretty much what I specialize in. And because my background originally was in um, Eastern therapies, I just naturally see the meridian system and the limb system together, and I don't know how to separate them. So I'm going to show you what my model is, because I believe that lymphedema can be prevented. And if you're treating it, uh, if you've had it a long time, it's a lot harder to deal with. Um, but there may be some information for you in this talk that can give you a new uh, avenue for treatment. So right now, uh, if you ha are diagnosed with breast cancer, there is no standard in terms of what you're told about your risk of lymphedema or not. And I've talked in hospitals and talked to nurses about this and trained them about lymph. I'm training, I'm a massage therapist training the nurses about lymph. You should be afraid, right? Um, they don't know what to say. They don't want to say too much because they don't want to scare you. They don't want to overwhelm you with information, but they don't want to not tell you. But some people don't tell you. And some women start to think they have some swelling. If you start to think you have swelling after surgery, a lot of times you maybe think your cancer's back. You know, the doctors like may not be educated about it. So what I would like to see eventually is a better standard for educating women. And I think m pretty much 99% of the women I met are smart. Just kidding. You can handle more information, especially after treatment. So it's not that much. I'm going to teach you about your lymphatic system, and I'm going to teach you about your meridian system. And I'm also going to overlay on that in 40 minutes your fascial system, the muscle system. Because I think the three are like the golden triangle, and we'll go into it. So, so a lot of people are just, we don't know what causes lymphedema. Some people just get it, some people don't. They think that, that we could look deeper here. So this is what I'm developing here is a series of self-assessment techniques for women to use so that hopefully they can prevent lymphedema from happening in the first place. And Dr. Um, Gwen here has inspired me to try to study this. So uh, I'll give my information at the end if you want to go through my training and I can ask you a bunch of questions afterwards. Maybe we can pull a study out of this. The problem with giving someone just a sheet about lymphedema is treatments are completely different. I've never seen two people who go through the same treatments because even if you have no dissection, the method that the surgeon may have used for no dissection is different. Where your node is is different. The type of surgery you had is different. Whether you had radiation is different. Whether you had, do you know what I'm talking about? So I can't give you, this is a universal thing, but I can say, here are some ways to check yourself. I think it's gonna be a, a lot more accurate. So these are the key words we're gonna use here, lymph, energy, and fascia. I am a lymphomaniac. <laughs> I will use humor here because I'm going to try and give you a lot of information in a short amount of time. But seriously, it's an, a really amazing system. It looks exactly like your circulatory system, but it doesn't have a heart that's pumping it. So your heart is beating all the time with very little effort. So you may move 40,000 liters of blood in a day, but your lymph only moves when you move. So all these stories, all the studies about exercise and how much it helps is very related to the lymphatic system. It's good to know that you have between 700 and 1,000 nodes in your body because some, of, some people have taken out four, 30 nodes, but you still have a lot. Most women, if they've had surgery in the past 10 years, have only taken out four or five nodes. And usually when I tell a patient, well, you still have maybe 20 nodes in here. They didn't take all your nodes. It's good information, but a lot of women don't have that information. Lymph is interesting because we think of it as a special fluid, but it's like this. If I'm inside your cell, if I'm inside around your cells, I'm called interstitial fluid. If I'm in your lymph system over here, I'm called lymphatic fluid. Your lymph is everywhere. There's maybe your inner ear and the placenta, very few places your lymph isn't. And what we know about lymph is that scar tissue slows it down. 
And so you have scar tissue issues with cancer from surgery, but you also have scar tissue issues, I think even more so sometimes from radiation and the damage from radiation. I love this picture. I want to get a tattoo of lymph. It's so interesting. So here you can see it looks like your circulatory system. But one thing I want to point out to you is in this here, these are the initial lymphatic capillaries. They're tiny. And they're held on by what's called anchoring filaments. And you can sort of see these in here, these little guys. And that's why when you move and your muscle relax and contracts, those little lymphatic capillaries open and close, open and close. So there's a connection between your fascial system and your lymphatic system. They're right together. So sometimes to understand things in Western medicine, we break it down a lot. But you can't separate this out from your fascial system. And now they've discovered the meridians. They have actually found them in the physiology. And there's some, this, is, this is still all theory. There's something they call Bongen channels. Uh, I have a slide on it later. And they found that those actually are right inside your lymphatic system. So the meridian system, the fascial system, and the lymphatic system, I would argue, cannot be separated. We know that it basically it moves toward the heart. We know that it moves with muscle contraction. So if your system is compromised and your muscles, I don't know anyone whose muscles are not chronically tight in their neck and shoulders. And if you think about breast health and what that implicates, that's a whole nother talk. But it, if your muscle's chronically tight, you're not getting the full range of motion in your lymphatic system. It moves slower than government at three inches a minute. <laughs> so exercise, really, if you are just moving your lymph only in a regular day, you may only use four or five liters of lymph in a day. But with exercise or lymphatic massage, you could up that to 20 liters a day. So you really can increase the amount of lymphatic circulation that's going on. Alex Gray, I just love his images. You have a deep and a superficial lymphatic system. Now, node removal is being questioned and just put this uh, after the San Antonio conference, they're starting to question whether node removal is um, necessary at all, but as we know, before, from research to clinical practice, we're going to have 10 years where people are still having their nodes removed. So that's your node. It looks like a little kidney. I'm telling you, I'm a lymphomaniac. It's so amazing the way that this system not only cleans everything, but recycles. What a lot of women don't know is that half, a lot of people don't know, is that half the lymph nodes in your belly, half the lymph nodes in your body are in your belly. And we call this, um, if mama's not happy, nobody's happy. So it, you're, how many of you know that your digestive health is crucial in moving your lymph? People don't think about it. So I get to say in front of how many people poo. Like you have to poo, and you have to poo every day. And I was thinking we would talk about that more in this conference. Nobody wants to talk about it. But it's really important, and women are twice as likely to be constipated as men. And what I've learned in my practice is that I'll ask women, do you have irregular bowel movements? And they'll say, yeah, but regular could be every three days. So I like seriously talk about poo. I know more about my clients' poo than most people do. But you want a daily, at least daily, easy bowel movement. And just that is helpful for your lymph, and one of the easiest totally cost-free ways to do it is to massage your belly. You see those little arrows? I drew that, by the way. I moved to Carmel to be an artist, but it didn't work out, so I'm a massage therapist. Yeah, I think, you know, it, I think that visualization is actually pretty important, and your intention is important. So it's a really easy thing to do if you have trouble sleeping. Or, like me, if you don't want to wake up in the morning and it's cold out, 